Okay, let's finish up this. For those of you guys in uh, fifth period, you've already talked about osteoporosis, so why don't you guys skip on ahead to, um, to the uh, common joint injury. So just fast forward through this until you get there so you guys can just hear what you need to. Okay, osteoporosis. Um, you guys are probably familiar with osteoporosis. Making sure my video doesn't even look like it was working. Okay, you guys are probably familiar with osteoporosis. And um, <clears throat> so look at the meaning of it. Osteo is bone, cis means abnormal condition, and pores means pore. Okay, it's an opening. So osteoporosis is actually a, a condition where your bones basically get like over porous, if you will. So, um, yeah, there's two different types. Okay, we've got uh, type one, which is like postmenopausal osteoporosis, and this particularly happens to women who are postmenopause. And if you don't know what menopause is, that's that's a usually middle-aged women somewhere in their middle ages, 40s, 50s, um, sometimes can be later than that even, will just stop making hormones. And the the reason that this causes an increased uh, risk of osteoporosis is because is because uh, Estrogen actually makes calcium stay in the bones. Give me a minute. And uh, so it makes our bones absorb calcium. That's why one of the things estrogen does. That's why after menopause, women are particularly at risk for osteoporosis. Um, much higher. Uh, oh, fracture sites that are really common. We see lots of fractures in the femoral neck. Just remember how narrow and thin that, that bone is. Um, Vertebrae, we see a lot of them in, in, in the wrist as well, I guess from falls probably. Okay, the second type of osteoporosis is age-related, and this affects most people over the age of 70. So most people you see who are over 70 have some, some level of osteoporosis. And we see this a lot, and um, we talked about this a little bit with the appendicular skeleton. We see this a lot um, in elderly people who have kyphosis, which is where that thoracic spine really arches outwards. Um, and they kind of have that hunchback look. That has to do with fractures that are actually in the vertebrae, where they've actually just kind of, whoops, where they've actually compressed um, and caused that fracturing, and they actually lose height um, doing that because of the way that those bones have, have kind of fallen on each other. Typically, you'll see. Um, most fractures that people get after like the age of 60 um, are because of osteoporosis because it just makes the bone so weak. To prevent osteoporosis, lots of calcium intake, especially when, especially like for you girls um, and guys too, now is the time when your bones are growing and they're, you know, it's really important that you give them a good foundation that you take in all of your calcium that you need now. Now is the age where you need to do that so that this doesn't affect you, you know, 40 years from now. And then the other thing that helps to prevent it is weight-bearing exercise. Not swimming, but I'm talking walking, you know, running, weight-bearing exercise that actually causes the bones to break down a little bit and regrow and break down and regrow. That, that helps them. That really strengthens them. <clears throat> if you guys will, I want you to actually turn... I'm not going to lecture on this part. I actually want you guys to read it out loud. So you guys can go ahead. Um, go to page. I want you guys to go to page 144. And y'all can just pause the video for a minute and just read where it talks about the female athlete triad. I want you guys to read that out loud in class okay you discuss it for a minute and then you can start the video again and we'll pick up at common joint injuries but i want you to just stop it i want you to just read this out loud go for me okay common joint injuries <clears throat> these are going to be some that you guys are familiar with so sprains usually we see um, sprain in ankle or uh, typically ankle, sometimes the wrist, you'll see them. Typically this could be a torn ligament or tendon or 
I would say usually it's just stretched, like stretched beyond what it, it wanted to stretch, and that causes it to get inflamed and irritated, um, and that which causes pain and swelling because it because it's inflamed, and our body issues an immune response. Um, typically, we see this most in the lateral ligaments, the ones on the outside of the ankle. Now, people can get inner ankle ones or high ankle sprains, whatever, but that's usually where we see it. Um, and that's just from that foot, you know, arching too far out to the side and pulling on that, uh, on that ligament so that it's, it stretches it out too much. Best thing to do for that, rest, ice, compression, so wrapping it up, and elevation. Don't wrap it up, though, so to the point you lose circulation. Okay, dislocations. This is just where um, a bone is displaced from its socket where it's supposed to stay. So you usually see these, you know, fingers, shoulder, people get their shoulders displaced. Knees can happen, which sounds horrible to me. Uh, but usually you see lots of fingers and shoulders. Hips, people can get dislocated hips as well. Uh, bursitis. This is an inflammation of the bursae. And remember, the bursae are those sacs that provide cushion, uh, fluid cushion around your joints. So usually this is related to overuse. So like a pitcher, for example, you might see with bursitis because they do that pitching motion constantly all the time. Those are some things that we might see. Uh, arthritis. Arthritis is really just a term for a lot of different types of there's just tons of different kinds of arthritis, like over 100 different kinds. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis is one that we hear about a lot because it, it tends to have the most disfigurement. And I actually have, oh, I looked it up. I actually have, I'm going to show you guys a picture. Somewhere in here. No. Um, here we go. Um, so here are some pictures of some rheumatoid arthritis, and you guys can see this one's pretty severe. You can see where <coughs> these areas where the bone is really white, and that's an area of injury. You can tell because it's it just that's how they look. So. Um, Here's some, you can see their dis this dislocation where their toes have gone sideways. Look at this one. Um, here's one, you can see they're really swollen. Again, right here, causes that severe dislocation. So we see this a lot. Um, it just is really debilitating. People have it. It's not something that they get over. It's actually your your bones. It's like your body actually is attacking your joints. That's what rheumatoid arthritis is. It's an immune disease. And it's not just something that you get because you overused your knee or whatever. This is an actual immune system disorder where your body attacks your joints and, and causes problems there. Um, and it can also occur in children. You can have juvenile rheumatoid diabetes or not diabetes. Arthritis, I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, the signs and symptoms, inflammation, thickening of the bone tissue, the synovial membrane and articular cartilage actually just break down. That's what causes, you know, you have an increased amount of friction because you don't have that cushion there anymore. That causes severe pain and swelling. Um, decreased motion, okay, they're not able to move like normal. And then those bones can actually fuse together. You also see anemia, fatigue, and then atrophy of those muscles because, because they can't move those bones, their muscles will atrophy because they're, they're not getting used. Okay, osteoarthritis, the second one that's listed here. This is like your everyday old person arthritis, okay? So you get an injury and you get arthritis in your joint, probably osteoarthritis, or just as you get older, 
everybody gets osteoarthritis. That's like, oh, my knees hurt when, when it gets cold. That's just your everyday arthritis. Um, that's just a degeneration of the cartilage. Usually swelling and pain and decreased range of motion. People, they get really, those joints get really stiff. Um, so that's that. And um, you guys make sure that you study for the axial quiz. Study, study, study. Practice on, you know, think about where things are. Make sure you understand. If you have any questions, you guys can email me.